All right, here we go. Overdrive off and running TSN 1050 on the TSN app. Your home smart speaker up on TSN 4. Brian Hazio, Doug Jeff O'Neill, Jamie Noodles McLennan. How are we feeling? How's everyone doing today? Looking wow. good, feeling good, running with the, the pack? Are you still yeah, the pack. member of the pack? Everything all good or what? I, I'm glad you brought that up because I have to issue something because we've been attacking a group of people and it's going to stop today right now. And we'll that see. group of people is the heroes that run in inclement weather. Never. And- Chris Johnson. Never. Stop I'll it. Ne- I will never stop ridiculing those people. Dude, I'm telling you, <laughs> running is a lifestyle, and it's a vibe. It, what are you laughing at? <laughs> You've been doing it for three exactly. days. Three right. days, and now this guy. No, now it's not it's, three days. I'm just runner. saying, there will be a blizzard or tornado. It will be Christmas morning, New Year's morning. As my life coach says, you are what you do 90% of the time. There is no breaks. There's no vacations. Wow. And if there's snow, we have to start attacking that group of people. No, no. I am one of them now. Here, listen to me. Because my favorite video might be of all time. You remember that couple in that snowstorm yes. gets interviewed? Amazing. And she's like, no, we're having a great time. And then she just eats Wipes it. Wipes yep. out. Like that- concussion. <laughs> like really bad CT. To the point where the reporter's like, are you okay? And she knew. Oh, man. She, she was struggling. She had to get up. up. Had exactly. to get up. Dude, I'm asking you as a friend, don't find the video. I want that because, video no. and I want that played because no. that's he- heroism yeah. 101. It is. Get that's the my hell sister. in the house and run on that's the treadmill. That's my sister. That's not your sister. That's, that's my sister. sister. That is that's a your lunatic. spirit animal. That is a lunatic yeah. that decided to be a hero in a snowstorm, and then she paid the price for it. Completely and then the husband necessary. didn't know what to do either. Anyway, that is the positive part. That is a part of my life now, and we're not making fun of those well, types anymore. You know anymore. what's amazing is <laughs> this guy, him and I are about three weeks away from playing golf. Yes. And I'm going to see him in that cart – Pull up to the first oh, yeah, <laughs> and no, but you motor don't... down the fairway the first. But you and don't understand like, with my life coach. Cart. No, no. Yeah, what you're you going to be in a car. I do understand. I know exactly what you what's don't coming. understand is I've mapped things out for golf season with the life coach and I show up at 530 a.m. And I run 5K on the golf course, and then I put my golf stuff on okay. and then I get into the Are car. Are you allowed to run on a golf course? No, you're yes, probably not supposed yeah. to. You're definitely I'm a not member. To. Yeah. I'm a member. You I know. Can, but... I've worked out before. I used to grab some dumbbells, go down to the third hole. You can rob. You can ask the superintendent. I used to grab some dumbbells, do some squats <laughs> at the bottom of three, and then sprint up the hill. Anyway, that's okay. the positive stuff. I the negative. It. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I got the heebie-jeebies about the Jays, man. Ooh. I think there's something up, dude. Where Ooh. this could come crumbling down. I I know. They got no hit last night by, I think, the fifth starter for the Astros. Yeah, because of injuries. What? I mean, that guy would well, be a double A if it wasn't for injuries. I just, I have one of those feelings that there's some dark clouds around the corner. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I know it's early. I just got the heebie-jeebies about that team, man. Well, I th- It was the yeah. worst possible scenario when everyone's talking about the offense and the bats and the lack of activity in the fifth game into the season you get no hit by someone that no one's heard of before. I know, but it is it is five games into yes, the season. They're two and three. And and what did I, I feel like from the outside, we've heard opinions of yes, they're an eighty four win team mm-hmm. to a ninety one, which is quite a big swing, is it not? Ninety one ninety two. The 92? difference between making the playoffs and missing the playoffs. So so I got a bad feeling, man. I don't I know. Hear you. I, I, I get hear it. You. I get it. I I mean but I think we got to breathe a little bit, let things settle in. Now, it didn't start great, like Bo, you know, not being available, yeah. stuff like that. That type of stuff can creep in, and if he misses an extended amount of time, now all of a sudden you're trying different people. But I just want to say breathe. Let's If they have a huge win today, which what are we Which they very well for? could, right? right? And you got Valdez on the mound for Houston, which is not going to be easy. But Verlander's out. McCullers is out. And Blanco, like he was working that changeup last night. And he pitched incredibly well. Credit where it's due. Guy throws a no hitter. He walked the first guy he saw. He walked Springer. Dude, like first he was batter out of the game. a car wash last year. That guy. <laughs> I'm not kidding. He was. They he, pulled him off a car wash. And he, he just no hit them. It literally was Jake <laughs> Taylor in the Mexican League last yes. year. Like this guy. That was his eighth career start. He's 
30 years old. Yes. I would guess he's still waiting for clearance from HR to get a pass to get into the building. Yeah. He's... Like that guy's knocking on the door and the trainer's going to pick him up. And he no hit the Jays last night. And I get it. It's a change up and it was really well executed. And obviously the, the whole team performed well in terms of Houston defensively, the catcher, the game plan. You have to adjust to that guy. You have oh, to. Yeah. And it could not be a worse scenario because of everything we just went through all offseason, that their offense was anemic last year. It needed to be addressed. It wasn't addressed. In five games into the season, you get no hit. Right. And I'm dooms watching. I'm doomsday watching on transactions that I can't let go. Like when I watch our show and, and I look at the catcher, Stumpy Thomas, I'm just like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you got rid of... Yeah, Marino the, and, oh, and, and at, Lourdes Gurriel Jr. Gurriel's man. on fire. It's again, I know. five games. But five it's games. still, but it, in a but vacuum, in the World it Series last year. I know, it, in a vacuum, it doesn't look good. It looks because, awful. That trade is horrendous. Varsho hitting cleanup is a finable offense. And John Schneider the thing and that Don saves Mattingly, him is he, he should looks never like a hit heart and, He's a heart and soul guy. I know. And he looks like he's Charlie Hustle. And they and love him. And he takes him. it as serious. And yeah. they love him. Yeah. And and, yes. and he looks lovable and all that. But every time I look at him, I it's almost like I hate watches at bats where I'm like, mm. all I think about is that like, I, I, I'm like Lloyd Christmas looking in the <laughs> airport and I'm like, Moreno and Guriel, like goodbye, my love. Yeah. I, I'm Mary looking Swanson. in cert- Yes, Mary Swanson's I in Arizona it. right now. I hate it, and yeah. I got a bad vibe. Well, yeah. Moreno's going to be like a stud, a stud, I mean, and absolutely on a pathway stud. to being a stud. Yeah, not Probably. far away. I bet you people on TV are going to say that guy's the best catcher. Best catcher in baseball. In baseball. Yep, that and title's coming, and it's going to make me throw up. It but very it, well could happen. But that means the grit grinder Alejandro Kirk has to have Stumpy a good Thomas. season. Well, that doesn't help. I mean, the kid in Baltimore is probably going to hold that right. Like right. The, the catcher in Baltimore is likely going to be known as the best in the game. But Gabby's coming, and certainly in the National League side of things, the problem with Kirk is. Until he proves otherwise, he's a one-hit wonder. Right. He had that one great season, and it was a remarkable season. His yes. numbers were off the charts. He went to the All-Star game. He was great. They moved on. Again, Jansen factors in here, too, but Danny Jansen gets hurt a lot. Yeah. He's hurt right now. He's not available to them. Jansen's a guy they like. Kirk, obviously, they liked. Marino's one thing. Gurriel's another. But it's you can handle what, what Marino and Gurriel are going to do if Varsho pulls his weight. Problem no is, kidding. he doesn't pull his weight. And he wasn't alone last night. Literally nobody pulled their weight. No. Springer walked twice, which is a really strange anomaly. His first at bat and his last at bat. But Varsho hitting cleanup, and I get Pichette's out. And it is, it's a weird thing because of the mojo hanging over this team. I agree with you. I'm watching them last night, and I'm looking at their lineup. And you get deeper into your lineup, and you're like, I don't... I don't like that. Yeah. Like Varsho's hitting fourth, and there's Kiner for left, uh, And it's like, what is he going to bring? And you know, they got everything they could out of Kiermaier. What's he going to do? And Biggio, is he a guy that can consistently hit at the major league level? And you take Bo out of the lineup, and you're like, what What do we have here? Yeah. You know, what do you have? And if it Turner's not going to play, what are you going to have? And, yeah, it's two and three, long season, Let's 157 breathe. games Let's to go, breathe. but you get no hit. And they seem to get no hit a lot. They got no hit last year by Detroit. It was a combined no hitter. There were three pitchers that actually factored into that. But they had a no hitter. Against them in 18, 19, Verlander's got him twice. They've been no hit four times in like the last six and a half years. That is a little stunning. Bit stunning, but I don't know if there's a stat who's had the most. Uh, it's an interesting question. I would guess it would be a, a team that's been around longer, you know, like yeah, but, the Pirates or something. But if you did it and said in the last 10 years, who's been no hit the most? I'd be surprised if the if anyone's been no hit more than the Jays over the last six or seven. Like, there it is up on the board. Lenny Baker got him back in 81. Stewart, Nolan Ryan, I remember that. I think that was Ryan's Bar- last. Barker or Baker? <laughs> oh, Lenny Barker. <laughs> Len Barker. Lenny Baker. Baker or Barker. Lenny Baker, Barker. Tomato, tomato. Like, exactly. Like, it's tough. There's I love the, big names the Tigers. Like- July 8, 23, the Tigers, because it was a combined no-hitter. But Verlander got him twice, which is wild. Yeah. And obviously, Nolan Ryan got him back in 91. Well, that was a famous Nolan one. Ryan is... One of my favorites. And he had, time. what, seven or eight in his career? You know, like Nolan Ryan you know, hit a lot of different teams. Right. But it just, I don't know. It's it would, be, it would be better if the arms were getting blown up, right. which they did last night too. I mean, yeah. let's clarify that. Francis and the bullpen didn't have themselves a great night either. They, they, they got blown out last night, and they got blown out a couple of times at the drop. 
But if the arms are struggling, you can say Romano, Swanson, Gosman's figuring it out. Well, Manoa, yeah. blah, blah. It's when the bats are not alive, and that was always the concern. All right, it's, well, uh, it's a stunning beginning. Yeah, enough but of this negative. Moving Nelly, off I was that. Say what the, we're 10 minutes in, and yeah, we're moving we're off that. the lead. No? Well, the, and the lead, there's a couple different leads. LeBron's in town tonight. I haven't seen any news on if he's definitively playing. I feel like he's going to pull the shoot because the Raptors are the Raptors, yeah. and he's like, we can probably win just having Austin Rivers out there doing whatever he wants. And I'm not sure if Anthony Davis will play. And Davis hasn't played up here since like 19 or, or 19. It feels like <laughs> it. 2018, I think it is. We got LeBron in town, the Lakers in town, and the Leafs coming off a big win last night. Big win. Big win. And I like the third period was what it was. But the glass half full, if you're looking for history, is the third period happened, so the empty net was available for Matthews to tuck into. Right. Why the right? hell didn't the coach put him out there with like why he put the fourth line out I there? Don't, I get was, it. It's, yeah. Dude, I, that's amateur hour. Cut the crap with that. That's not what those guys do. Put Austin Matthews out. He's got 61 goals. Put him out in the ice. I didn't understand. Fourth line players do not go out there in the last two minutes. I get it. You want to see what people are doing. You want to throw around little nuggets for people that have had good games. Not the time. That's amateur hour stuff. I don't know what the coach was doing. And they had not the well. biggest of deals. They did have a great game, but they they're yeah. never out there. That's not a situation for them to succeed. No, they're just not familiar with it. I don't know why he did that. It bothered. And me. you're right. I, they they won't be in the playoffs. There's yeah, no I, situation. So in a why do game it? Late. Especially exactly. when you got a guy that can rip home an empty netter, which he ultimately did. I, that I, was just dumb. I dumbed the down. I dumbed the game down. Maybe I was wrong. I thought the Leafs were great for two periods and stunk in the third. And I thought Florida was terrible for two periods and was great in the third. Yeah. But noodles, I will say much like when teams put it on the Leafs, Leafs did some good things and played big boy hockey and made, and, and played well to create their own opportunities and yep. make Florida look bad. And that's what they got to bring to the table. Come playoff time. There was some, some plays by Matthews and Nylander down low where that's intensity at their level. They're not going to run people over, punch people in the face, but if they're strong on the puck and they want to go in the corner and get it, go ahead and do it. Mm. That that that's what that's what your pushback is. Yeah. You don't want to be Sam Bennett or Matthew Kachuk and yelling and punching and screaming and fighting, but that's your intensity. Nylander had a power move in the corner where he just stripped the puck off somebody, fended somebody off. Matthew was strong along the boards, all that stuff. That's what they that's what they have to do. There was good support. Young guys showed up and scored some goals. Mm -hmm. All the lines contributed, but the key to everything is 34 being 34. If he wants to dictate and say, every time on the ice, I'm going to be a pain in the ass and I'm going to be a handful, it's one of the major keys. We can go through a checklist, and I'm sure we're going to do it. We'll probably have a list of most important factors for the Leafs' success in the playoffs. It's always going to go to that guy right there driving the bus every damn time. Yeah, and outside yeah. of the Robertson goal, which was a beautiful move and beautiful setup, and he read the play beautifully, every other goal was around the net and created below the goal line. Yeah. And that's playoff hockey that's right you know and that's, that's right. i give them credit yes florida obviously will look at it and say defensive breakdown we didn't like oh, that number seven should have taken his gear off sure look off and, and specifically might, again on, he, on the he robertson might as, goal. he might as well wear a leaf jersey last night every time you turned around that guy was on the but ice. he's playing it was right like that's the, as far as i know he's going to be a member of their yeah. top six come playoff time i could be wrong on that but i think the Leafs. i agree with oh i mean it can't always be well the other team stunk and that's why the leafs won Florida hasn't been playing great. No. Like they're they're kind of they're in Montreal tonight. I would assume they win, but they are stumbling into the playoffs. They do not look like this big bad world beating team that they did look like about a month ago. Yes. So I, I would bank on them probably reverting back to who they were. Right. But a lot of that is is the goaltender. I mean, last year they got a lot of clutch play in the playoffs. Kachuk was unbelievable. Verhage was great. Bennett was great. Montour was great. Right. Barkov was obviously exceptional. Like they, they, those players stepped up, and last year those players collectively proved we can perform in the playoffs. Reinhardt would be included in that, but that miracle run started at three-one down in Boston because Bob said screw it, and yeah. he put forth one of the great goaltending performances in NHL history. That is not hyperbole. Yeah, unbelievable what he did, and I guess what I'm saying is. They're no different than other teams where if the goaltender isn't sharp, you may not have the opportunity to look like a hero exactly. and score the big OT winner or whatever. And how are you going to make his life uncomfortable? The Leafs did it against Vasilevsky in Tampa, and I thought they did it pretty well last night. They had him moving and shifting, and 
they they created a lot of offense below the dots, and that's what you have to do in the playoffs. You got you got to get ugly goals. You got to get ugly goals. Yeah, and there was like to me they they deserved what they got because they you know they were the better team the first two periods, and and to me I didn't notice Kachuk. I didn't notice really quiet. Like I thought some of their top players were noticeable, mm-hmm. and the Leafs top players were. And then That's Florida's in their funk. They had a bit of a funk at the beginning of the season. They had a bunch of guys that were missing, and then they went on that ultimate heater. But yeah. we've seen in the league through the ups and downs, and i got to be honest with you guys, I think it's a dangerous time for a team to struggle a little bit because sure as heck you know that they're going to pick it up right before the playoff starts, and they're going to have a couple heater games and say, oh, that's what we do. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't worry one bit about the Florida Panthers. Well, no. I, it, like, no, I you said this so yesterday. Win or lose, like you get what you get out of it, yeah, exactly. but you take the win and you move on. That's like it. if they lose against Florida in Florida a week and a half, when is it? Next week or a week and a half? Uh, the following week, yeah, two weeks from now. Are we all going to be like, that's it? No. It can't be? No. No, it you doesn't take matter. The, like what you need to do is worry about yourself. Mm-hmm. The other team will worry about them, and then you do your pre-scout. There's a chance they might not play him. You they could still. Know, Florida could Florida catch goes Boston. On a heater and and yeah, Tampa and could all catch of a the Leafs. Boston, like I would just worry about the fabric of your own game, which looked really good for two periods, and then the third kind of third. It definitely and, got wonky on. And he calls a timeout, and then Kachuk feathers one over to Rodriguez. He hits the post. Like Keith's yeah. head would have popped off. I know. There after was you couple, call a timeout, it wasn't. It wasn't good, but they got the job it wasn't done. A game of perfect. Um, I thought, like, the first period I thought was thoroughly entertaining because it was very physical, too. Like, there, there was obviously the Leafs get on the board early and often. Robertson scores. Matthews scores. It's 2 nothing. I thought there was some energy in the building. But Great it was energy, physical. I thought. Yeah, really good energy and, you know, some hits. I wouldn't say it was a fight necessarily, but Nye's response to something he didn't like. Uh, Reeves was in the mix last night. Like, I, mm-hmm. thought, the, I thought it was a fun hockey game last night. Um, what that means for where we are two and a half, three weeks from now, like you said, I, I don't think it means anything. But the Leafs are winning a lot of games. Like that's ultimately what comes out of it. The Leafs are winning a lot of games. I, I like their mojo. I like the fact that they seem to, you know, have some sort of connectivity here. They seem to be willing to step up in terms of physicality, yes. in terms of toughness, in terms They're of being proactive. For keeps, yeah, it seems like a good sign. I mean, what yes. is what is that going to mean again come playoff time? I. I don't know. We'll find out. But yeah. it's better than the alternative, Dude, which would be you know what the alternative they're small, is. they're weak, or they're stumbling, and they're not doing that. They're going the opposite way. They're playing for keeps, and they're playing NHL-style hockey as opposed before, which I've described as the coach of the Florida Panthers when he was my coach. He described it as just throwing your sticks out there to see what happens. It was, And we've seen them do that, where it's like, nah, well, let's just... And I've also described it as a playing score a goal where it's just like, I want to score a goal. Anything else that ha- they're playing for keeps and they're playing for the scoreboard and they play like they're meaning it, which mm. is, that's all it's all about. And those people down there in that building, that's all they give a crap about. Yep. You go out there and play for keeps. Obviously they like it when there's skill involved and you can score some goals and win some games, but that's all they want you to do is play for keeps. That's it. What do you, and they do, they, what, they're doing it. They are at this point. What do you think is a bigger turnaround? Samsonov or Reeves? Terms of where they I'll were tell you what, that belt. Reeves, that Ryan Reeves, I, I don't know, but it looks like he's 20 pounds lighter on the ice. Because well, he's, he's moving he way faster. Escaped, yeah. I don't know if there was an injury or he had some beef on him that was too much, but he is moving out there and he looks good. Yeah. And it's, it's effective. It's Samson off for me. And last night, I his game was weird because I thought he made some great saves and, and I didn't down. like some but he pucks had got through him last night three though. pucks went through him that, that goal been, from the point noodles was bizarre world I was talking to somebody earlier it reminded me you guys remember the Jordan Greenway goal in Buffalo yeah mm-hmm. that wrist shot over yes. the blue line where he kind of stands up and then goes down he was trying to find the puck but it, he didn't even find like he didn't look around the body he didn't look ever it was just one of those ones it was like oh my god it's by him already and then he reacts but I didn't love his game last night, but I thought he made a couple really good saves. I love the rebound right pad save in the second period. And then I love – he had a glove save on Reinhardt in the second period on a three-on-two. Reinhardt cut to the middle mm-hmm. and tried to go short side shelf. I thought there were some timely saves, but I, di- I didn't think it was a tidy game for him. If no, I agree sense. with you. Tidy. Yep. But you'll take it. But Exactly. And, again, a win. positive vibes for the Leafs and Samsonov and – they're doing that last night without Marner, without Yarncrook, without Riley, without Edmondson. And Florida is relatively healthy. You know, like that was 
more or less what you're going to see come come playoff time um, if they play the Panthers again. Florida's only two points back at Boston. Like there's still going to be some jockeying there. Yeah, I think the the scary not scary part, the sad part is we'd like to get ready for it right now. It might be that last week that we're I kind of like going, it. It's like what you said the other week. Well, at least it, it allows for you to focus on something different. Right. That, that it could really throw you a curveball here. Last second, it's like, oh, we faced them. Now, all of a sudden, they could. Like, it's not likely Tampa catches them. Tampa lost last night. The Leafs have a six-point buffer. They've each got eight games left. But they play each other twice. Yeah. So yeah. If Tampa wins tomorrow in reg and then wins in Tampa, there's a chance. Yeah, there's there's moving parts. Yeah. But you're right. It but doesn't look as – it looks more bleak yeah. on that situation. But I think – And the, the Leafs could still move up. The Leafs are only four points back of Florida. They've got them again, and they got a game in hand. That's just – that's home ice. That, that exactly. What year was it where they, Florida, they were locked right. into their, their matchup, I think, January 1? Oh, it was a couple years Co- ago. A couple was, years yeah, ago. They were locked into Tampa January 1, and that, that was nuts. That's up. not fun, but I, I don't know. Are you – so you'd, you'd rather have it this way. It's like, hey, we don't know. I kind of, it's different I'm because it. I it's think just, the last two years, last year you knew it because Boston was gone. Right. You knew it. You knew the Leafs were playing Tampa at home almost from January. And the year before, I think it was even more clear because Florida was gone. Right. And it was going to be Leafs-Tampa in the first round and the Leafs were going to start in Tampa. I believe that's right. Right. Um, this year, again, it, it they're going to start on the road more than likely unless they catch Florida. I guess, it, again, it's possible they have home ice. But I like the idea that it's it could be Florida, it could be Boston. I think the the idea of them falling back to a wild card spot, if it feels like that's died now. So the idea that it's New York or Carolina is probably not going to happen. Yeah. But they Two probably start now, we'll in probably Boston, in Florida. Well, no. The the interesting thing is they finished their season in Florida, playing Florida Tampa. I think back to back nights. Right. But if they beat Tampa tomorrow, that pretty much puts yes. One, I the think least if the least beat Tampa, especially in reg, That's it's it's over. Buffer, then, Tampa's Tampa gone. Can't, not going to be able to catch them. Right. I don't believe. The question will be if you get to the end and you're playing Florida with a chance to pass them. Obviously, you're going to go all out, but yeah. it's also likely going to be a load management situation at that point where you got two games left and the playoffs are about to start. But is it a load management if the guy is one goal away? Matthews, I don't think so. I mean. I shouldn't say that. I, I do think I think Matthews and company will prioritize the playoffs. That's where I believe his mentality will be. I think that's where it should be. I think ideally this guy rips home a bunch of goals before you get to the final game of the season or the final back-to-back so that you don't need to play him. Or it goes the game other way. One, yeah. He runs into a, a cold streak and he's at 64 or 65, and you're like, all right, you're done. That's don't enough. Don't worry about it. But, but I, if you're right. at 68 or 69 and you got a game left, he's going to play. I kind of and feel I think like he it should. might be that. But he, like, I think he, he should. I think chasing him. 70 is something. You don't do it in a, in a stupid fashion. You don't do it in a way that is overwhelmingly selfish and, and silly. And, you know, right. you're getting blown out or you're up big and this guy's getting double shifted. No, but, but uh, he's just naturally going to find the puck and find opportunities and score goals. Yeah, so like I he, mean, he just it, it finds his stick. Like he's gonna if he's playing, he's probably going to score a goal. He's That's how we operate. Like he's going to he have is. his answer. You, he'll have you. Know, we'll have our answer three, four games, from, three games from now. Yes, exactly. That's where you kind of go. Okay, well this, but I feel like just knowing how things are. We might ha- not have that answer. I wouldn't uh, be surprised. Going to be right there in the if he's the got sixty-seven goals with two games to go. Yeah. You know, and it's like, all right, what should we do yeah. here? And I, I think he'd take his foot off the gas and not play if he felt like that's in the best interest of the team and in the best interest but, of his own performance come playoff time. You also have, and that's how it should out. be. No, you, you're right, but you also have to figure out if they finish and then when are they going to start. You still need to balance that time in mm-hmm. between. You, you don't. I don't know if you want him not playing for a full week or something like that before it. Right. Well, they canceled practice today. In yeah. large part, I would guess, because of the game last night, they played tomorrow, this time of year, you want rest. Yet, if you're Marner and Riley and Edmondson, you want to get back into the swing of things. Yeah, those guys. Noodles, are- how many practices yeah. do you remember being canceled or switched I, I've to never, a skill this is This is all load management. This is sports science. I There were times where I felt like we never got a day off in a month. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, you skated every day, especially as a backup. Like, I, I skated every day. Yeah. But One like, time the Fergler on the plane... Yeah. Explained to Sundin, he's like, I just can't give you guys a day off. We get crushed in the media for that. It's just like you're such. <laughs> but it's 
back then it was like you need to do more you need to do more I nowadays know. or, it's or less, you're gonna you pay a left. price on the ice for what you did like the yeah. last game like it, it was just archaic thinking it, like it's oh you now. don't want to work in the game you're gonna work in practice we're gonna watch this it's just yeah i don't it know. was literally treating people like children it was like before we go stuff. can we can we see this video i need to see this do you video. want to see the runners where were this, well, this was somewhere in new england i believe i think it was in no, portland it was toronto no it was no, portland it oregon i believe oh, so they we're, were both in. way off i i watched the video there they are. there's did. my people yeah those, those are my that's my brother and my sister that's your soul and they're sister. like what did they yeah. say oh we're loving running yeah, loving oh, running outside yeah oh watch oh, this oh, oh that oh, hurts so that one oh much and she, look at her lower back she's like i have to go to the hospital <laughs> Give me up, uh, like the camera guys. Hey, like, I thought I said we're not no, chirping I, those no, people. Those can. are my people. You can you, you can recuse yourself. I'll never I, stop. I I love running. I had to, I, don't. I, I had back surgery, so I had to stop running. I loved running, but there's also a time and place for it. I know that's not the time and place. storm. For it. Like they're out there doing live hits to express. Why you shouldn't be out there. Yeah. And these two are like, oh, it's the greatest thing. It's no, our lifestyle. Yeah, we love the run. We never dead stop. Wrong. They're Look out her. there She's interviewing so the lady pain. to say, why are you enjoying running no. outside? No, that's not. It's a lie. It's, it's a vibe. It's a lifestyle. It's you know a what dead I, street. Why are you two lunatics out here? Oh, yeah. we're out for a run. Of okay. course. That's why. That's and you know what I love is I'll bet you I'll bet you the camera guy's my spirit animal. He just wants to drink beers and eat wings and not move. Because he could have taken the camera off and be like, whoa. Yeah, he's like, can. no, no way, sure, man. man. I'm winning an Emmy for this. <laughs> and he made sure he caught that one. Absolutely chew. You're disgusting. You're disgusting. <laughs> Watch this guy. This guy's my spirit animal. This guy's Did a 40, 30. He zoomed in, dude. Right here. Right here. He's like, I could leave. Oh, that's oh, a zoom. Oh, he's that like, is a slight let me zoom. make sure. And let me make sure I catch her limping well, away. Well, first and foremost, I'm not she's moving. fine. Yes, oh, she she's started fine. running again like a warrior. No. See that? She started doing it no, again. No, he walked her off to the, out of the, the oh, camera yep. site yeah. and was like, make sure. Now, we're having fun. I hope she's all right. She, like, I, I believe I, that there was a later report that, that they she was fine. caught back okay, up good, with her and good. she was fine. Probably a tailbone issue. The spirit of this having fun is not anybody getting injured. It's well, more about, clearly. you know, you being a hero, that's yeah. what happens. And it was. Like, we should listen to the interview because they're going over the top. Oh, lazy. Why would you not? Who cares about the weather? We can't get enough. This is what we live for, running. <laughs> okay. We're in the middle of an ice storm. Go see how that works out I'm embarrassed you. of what you made me because in the past, I would roll down my window in a snowstorm and say, you're such a hero. You got to go for a jog in this weather, huh? That's yeah, my fault. And, and no, those are my people. Yeah. Well, now they are. I, mean, I can't yeah, wait huh? until you turn on them again. You'll be back. You'll be back. This guy, I give this. I give, I give you a Don't week. Don't you talk like that. I'm I never coming back. You're coming back, that. and you're coming back stronger than ever. <laughs> stronger than ever. All right. John Cooper's coming up. I think the Lightning are just landing in Toronto, so we're going to catch Coop. He'll be ecstatic about that. He'll be waiting for his bag or a cap. <laughs> yeah. He's coming on. So we'll catch up with John Cooper. we got MJ coming up. Confirm or deny today. LeBron is in town. The Lakers are in town. We'll look ahead to that. And the Jays are searching for hits tonight. Game two of their series down in Houston. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 4. Overdrive continues. Brought to you by FanDuel. Bringing you everything from the opening line to the final score. John Cooper of the Tampa Bay Lightning coming up later this hour. Mike Johnson will join us. You've got the Lakers and LeBron in town playing the Raptors tonight. The Jays seeking hits tonight. And this is the amazing thing about baseball early in the year. You get people, you know, like if you have an opinion, like they got no hit last night. That's really ugly. And right. then you just state a fact. Wow, they got no hit. That's really ugly. It's early. Yeah, we yeah. get it. I understand. Thank that you. Was me. <laughs> no, it's I, no, no, I know that. But it's like you can't acknowledge a fact. That well, we they, got no they got no hit, hit. last They're, night. That is the fact. There's That's no, just, there's no, no other way reason. around it. Yeah. They got no hit last night. And that's embarrassing when you get no hit. Credit yeah. to Blanco. But And it seems like when the Jays are ever doing that, some guy gets a weasel hit like in the ninth inning. Oh, and, and, yeah. And, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like well, Jim Joyce. one <laughs> guy can't do it. Yeah, I know. Just ex exactly. Like right, just cue ball one right oh, yeah. out into and right And Alejandro field. Kirk, I think, like – one of the plays was him trying to run out of ground out, and it's like, no, no, you're safe. You're mm. okay, pitcher. Like, you're, there's not going to be a hit here. He's not running that out. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. He'll be okay. Um, all right. So, Coop coming up here in a few moments. 
Um, you guys see John Tortorella after the game last Dude, night? Dude, it's just it's enough. enough it's exhausting. This guy. It, it is it's all about Tortorella. I saw it all I didn't the know time. The context of it because I saw they lost in overtime, right? So Morgan but Frost was, scores with ten seconds yes, left to yeah, force tight. overtime. The place that. is going nuts. The bench is going nuts. Right. This team is not that good. It is a miracle they're in the position they're in right now. This should be the most positive story of the year, right. and naturally, Torts has got to make it about him and make it negative. So he gets asked after the game. They had a rough second period, okay? Do we have the Tortorella clip? Let's play. This is Tortorella post game last night. Are you concerned at all that tonight it kind of lingered again that you just said it was a soft game, per se? Uh, not the whole game and not the whole group. There are certain people that they don't have a clue how to play or just don't have it in them to play in these type of situations. And this is why I'm glad we're playing them. I'm glad because we, we have to figure things out as far as what we're going to uh, become as a team here. That was embarrassing in the second period for the Philadelphia Flyer uniform, the way we played. Embarrassing. High marks as far as how we came back in the third. Some guys. Why doesn't he just like. What it is is the separation. Like, you guys are a bunch of dummies, and I'm the greatest coach mm -hmm. of all time. You won a Stanley Cup in 2004 with an incredibly talented team, and you beat the Tampa Bay Lightning, who won the President's Trophy. Other than that, it hasn't been that impressive. And I know you, his comeback to me would be the same as his comeback to Jumbo Joe. You haven't won squat, so why don't you shut up? Why don't you, like, just shut up, Torts. It's enough. Yeah. The He's separation of I, I'm the greatest and the team stupid and it's sucks. It's never his fault. It's a joke. It's, it's never it's a joke. his fault. Yeah. I'm telling you, he's on my coach of the year list. That team has no business being near the playoffs. I agree. Zero. I, I agree. And this, what bothers me, though, is if they get in, which they will, it'll be Torts did it. Right. If they miss, he's planting the seeds for no. These guys can't do it. Well, not me. They're not. I, a very they're good not team. built they're for not it. They're good. not they're built not for it. But good you know team. what? But they've been working their ass off for this. That what I bothers guess. me is the hypocrisy of this guy. Because it's always you got to do it right. You got to work. You got. And now he's basically calling out certain guys, saying they're soft. They can't do it. They don't have it. And it's like I would love to see. But if he has creative control, those guys will be gone this summer. Gone. Which I mean, if he's trying to help that organization. I think it's you've got a coach internally going. That guy doesn't know how to play, but I got to put him out there. Uh, I, I, obviously, I get what that's you're saying, his like assessment. Harden, I, but I, I get it. I just I, I get what you're saying, but I I I don't mind his approach. It just gets tiring. I know what you're it's saying. It's all the Every time. Day. Last last week it was the goalie stinks. Yeah, I'm well, not no that. comment. And then Sean Couturier stinks and. It's always someone else. It's never yeah. John Tortorella. Like, like it's, just switch it. He, he's he's got one. Pitch. His expiry date is just he's speeding it up. Incredible. Oh, I agree. Just I like think these guys. Two yeah. years from now, he's probably not the coach of that team. Maybe but sooner I, because of if a bunch of them walk in there, which has happened before, and they're like, we're, we're tired of the garbage. I just think you only got so many. You're going to weed out some of the guys who are. Like way noodles, like I get it. Floating. But that's there's the maybe thing. just maybe investigate a different approach instead of saying that guy stinks or they're just not ready to do this. Try something different. Agreed. Because all it is is I'm the smartest guy ever, and everyone else isn't either isn't ready for it or they stink. It's like okay, it's so exhausting to listen to. Yeah, you know, it's almost like he walks up with his cast and you know what he's gonna say. It's just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the What's thumb the cast. cast. What's it, the cast? It is bothersome, <laughs> though. <laughs> what, like a it's thumbs exhausting. up? It is. Like, it's like a movie character who's yeah. got, like, just <laughs> Sykes. <laughs> Richard Sykes. <laughs> he is Sykes yeah. from The Fugitive. Uh, yeah, he's Sykes from yeah. The Fugitive and with we, gray hair. <laughs> get that guy a trench coat. Get him yeah. a trench get coat. Get him a brown black, trench coat and a Sykes black afro wig, <laughs> and he's Sykes. Doesn't Sykes have the dark, like, yeah, yeah, dark afro hair? Yeah. Yeah. And he wears, oh, yeah, he's like, I got him. Really no, I got him now. Honestly, yeah. I Sykes. I get what you're saying. And I <laughs> get, get torts on a train with a trench coat. Yeah. Yes. Like Sykes. Wasn't yeah. Sykes like a giant too? Like, yeah, he, was he a big looked dude. like a big monster. A really big I get yeah. what you're he saying. A, I he just, had an attitude problem. Yeah, there's was, a fine absolutely. line and I just, uh, I think he crosses it. I don't disagree with that. I just, I think he's, he shoots from the hip. It's like, we didn't play well. We didn't do this. And it gets exhausting because they got a point, which was probably a huge point that's that the, might keep them in the playoff hunt. I right? guess that's my point is, listen, he's a good coach. He's yeah. a really good – There's you can't – I can't – no one's denying that. Right. He won his cup. I think he took the Rangers to a cup final in 2012. I believe he was – I'm pretty sure he was the coach that lost to the Kings. 
And then O referenced Columbus beating the 62 win yeah, he's, Tampa. He's had a and great he's been around career. forever. Yeah. He's, a, he's a good coach. Um, there's no denying that. But you also have to realize this team isn't that good. They've been punching above their weight. The front office was sellers at the deadline. Yep. And they storm back. They tie it late. Yes. Salvage a point. Yeah, what's wrong with saying parts out, of the game were hey, eye-opening, we but they showed a lot of balls? I, yeah. I, I, you're right. It's, just, I, I, it's I, I the same card all I the time. I can't argue with that. I can't argue with that. I, I think it's – I would like to know, like, why did he put the monster goalie in to start the second? Like, that well, was the other thing, too. They were yeah. down 2 nothing. Like, it wasn't like they were down 5 nothing. Like, it there were some moves point. there – like, I'll have to dig deeper into it. But yeah. Okay. Anyway. More more on that with Johnny in about 20 minutes. We'll come back and catch up with John Cooper. Get his take on Leafs Lightning tomorrow night. Where his team's at. Kucherov chasing a hard trophy. John Cooper will join us next. All right. Mike Johnson still to come. Confirm or deny. Still to come. LeBron in town with the Lakers. Leafs in action against Tampa tomorrow. Hoping to catch up here with uh, John Cooper momentarily. Jay's in action tonight as well. Jose Barrios on the mound. Mm-hmm. Jose Barrios. And I was so excited last night, too. Like, I was like, Jay's games are long. And right after the Leaf game, I'm going to tune in. I thought it would be the middle of the fifth or mm-hmm. something. It was the seventh inning, and it was Done. seven Cobb. Yeah. I'm like, well, I just I turned it right off, and I'm Here. like, no way, man. Yeah, it wasn't a good one last night, but it happens. I mean, that's the, the nature of a, a no-hitter. It is an outlier even more so that it's a pitcher that is not an everyday starter. Like, it's one thing if Verlander gets you, right. Nolan Ryan gets you, but it hap- Like it does happen. It's a random occurrence in, in baseball. It's like a goalie you've never heard of standing on his head and making 50 saves. Lucas Dostal. Lucas Dostal. Don't tell people <laughs> from Sun Media about that. But uh, anyway, I'm sure the Jays will get hits tonight. That's my yeah, they best will. bet. My best back. bet tonight is... Hits are coming for the Blue Jays I don't Blue think Jays any tonight. team has ever been no hit. Back to back games? Back? No. Would that is that possible? That's an interesting question, though. Like, what is the lowest amount of hits for a team the game after they got no hit? Yeah. Like, I wouldn't be surprised one if hitter. a one or two one hitter. hitter wouldn't yeah. be surprising at all. And can you imagine if that hit came in the seventh inning? How mortified you'd be. If you went like 15 innings without a hit, you would be well, think so of nervous. Some of the, think, think of some of the the back-to-back heater duo combos pitching-wise mm-hmm. in the big leagues. Right. Yeah, like, you got Randy Johnson into yeah. Kurt Schilling. Glavin yeah. Maddox, yeah. Smoltz Maddox, whatever. Mm-hmm. Just, you're getting a couple of heaters, man. They might yeah. just destroy you. Well, like when Verlander had his no-hitter in 2011 or whatever it was, Scherzer would have been in the rotation there. Oof. Like it would have been Verlander, Scherzer. What was that? Yeah. What was that? Braves? Was it Glavin and Maddox? Glavin, Maddox, Smoltz? Smoltz. All three of them are in the Hall of Fame. Oh, all three of them. That like, was a clinic. Unbelievable. They won the. They won the, the NL basically every year. It was four or five years in a row, and they finally got a World Series in, yeah, ninety six or something like that. But yeah, it was Maddox into Glavin into Smoltz. Yeah. They had a fourth guy, too. Was it Avery? They had someone else that was, like, really good, remember. too. I just remember those. I remember the two, yeah, for sure. Like, Smoltz was... Well, Smoltz got maybe the most unique career in, in pitching history because he went to the bullpen. And I want to say he's got, like, 150 saves and 200 wins. Man. Like, he's the only guy in baseball history with a certain amount of wins and a certain amount of saves. Right. And he just kind of jockeyed back and forth. And now he's been in the booth forever. Like, he's been yeah. he's been calling games... You with Fox, I think Fox or TBS. Um, anyway, he's a great analyst. Yeah, he's really good. Yeah, he's really, he really a great good. Player. Like he, those like pitchers. I find as analysts, like they can speak to, they spot things in terms of what a pitcher is oh, doing yeah. with mechanics that the the average person, myself included, just yeah. could not pick up on. Yeah, because like, they've been there. They've seen that. They, they, yeah. Their viewpoint is very unique. Yeah, it's so. way more like informative, I find, in terms of their approach. And the same thing applies with a hitter who can speak to what's going on in the box or whatever. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, Smoltz is, Smoltz is really good. Uh, all right, Johnny coming up in about 15 minutes. We're getting actually – I'm not surprised by this. A variety of answers on our Tortorella comments where O and I see it one way, Noodles, you see it another way. And a lot of people are coming to the defense of John Tortorella – I get the impression he's beloved in Philly because Philly's a tough town, blue collar town. I get it, but I got one comment like, that sums it up. It's like when they win, it's we. When they lose, it's them. That that's his whole approach. 
We win, it's we. Lose, it's those those dummies. It's just like enough's enough. Yeah, man. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm I I don't see it that way, but I just see I, I think what happens is the abrasiveness gets old. Mm-hmm. And that's what people get frustrated with. But I've I've had hardened coaches, and I think you always know where you stand. Good, bad, or indifferent. But you're right. Like in, in particular instances, he could have come out and said, Hey, we got a hell of a point tonight. You know, instead of like, hey, didn't like the second period, didn't like certain players. Like, I don't know if it's tactics. I, I do believe that shortens your coaching life. Mm-hmm. It really And does. that's a factor, Noodles. If it he's is. got a bunch of guys in there that are just prima donnas and they want to toe drag all over the place and they're not competitive and he knows they'll never win with them. Maybe he just says, screw these guys, because I, I, I just can't watch it. it, it, it but to be. listen to it, it's just like enough, man. It's tough. Enough is enough. It's tough. And, and you know what? We're not in that market. We don't see it every day. We don't, you know, don't live it every day. But it is, it is very, I mean, he's a soundbite once a week. Yeah. Oh, he's, he once offers up a lot of, he is the face of that organization. Yeah. Like it's not Katoria, I can tell you that. It's not Owen Tippett yet. It's not you know, Morgan Frost, or yeah. it is John Tortorella. When you talk Philly, you talk about Tortorella, and I think he loves that. I think he loves being in the firing line. He loves, you know, constantly giving reactions. I just don't think he can control his emotions that well. He's 65 going on five after yeah. losses. You know, like what he did to the goalie the other day. Sandstrom, and then yeah, he had to Sandstrom. come out and apologize. And, he's, and he's, he should. He's like, yeah, uh, we know. He gave up like four goals on like 14 shots. It wasn't yeah. a good performance. But that goaltending position has been in flux all year. All year. Like, it's been a weird, tough well, turnover. The Carter Hart give, situation. Carter like, Hart being at the forefront of that, clearly. Right. right. But just give an answer. Don't yeah. embarrass the guy and be like, mm, 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 yeah. and then the next day come back and apologize. But that's, he's you're, an emotional guy. Yeah. And I think you get what, what you see is what you get. And you're not going to love everything. And it's all right to talk about it, but... I always, I've always like enjoyed, like if he screws up, he's the first guy to go, I screwed up. Like he is a guy who actually will admit his mistakes, but I don't know. It, it, it just wears old. And yeah. I think that's where you and, guys are. And yet they're winning again. They're, they're, they're holding well, on for dear life in there, but someone's got to get in right. Like Washington, Detroit, Philly, Detroit. It's a, that was a big win for Detroit. They needed last that night. in Tampa last night. Like yeah. that, that was a big, big win for them. They're, they're. I don't know how to handicap that in terms of one team's going to get the third seed. Doesn't in Washington the have two games in hand? Yes. I believe on Detroit. Yes, yes that might do. come down to the last night of the season with whoever the hell. Well, gets and the anymore. Island is is still right there. The Islanders are three points back. Yep. Well, that so was it's three it. teams for one spot. Pitt still sniffing at five back. Well, Sid hit eighty-two points on the season. How was that? Pretty cool. Which is eh? incredible. That that guarantees him nineteen straight seasons of at least a point a game. Incredible. And Gretzky. Only Gretzky have ever done that. Which I, I love that he is included in like a Gretzky statistic because so much of the focus naturally has been on Ovechkin chasing down Gretzky. Right. And now recently McDavid, I guess, trying to get to a hundred assists and how Mc Gretzky kind of owned that statistic. And there's Sid on a, a team that is kind of just fading away and ultimately going to miss the playoffs, yet he's still performing. He's still putting up numbers. And to have 82 points plus that, because they still have a number of games left, he's going to hit 90-plus. Right. Him and Ovi, I hope they just do the routine that Gretzky got, Lemieux got, right into the Hall of Fame. No three-year wait. Both of those two players, that and there's going to be more afterwards. Those two guys deserve right in. As soon as you're done, yeah, you're in. It's, it's you an, think, an interesting you chat. You think they both would retire at the same time? Like it just it, it, happens. it could Their happen. Their deals are up or whatever. Like Ovi's hit his goals, you know. Sid's had enough, mm-hmm. and they just decide I'm retiring. Oh, hey, I happen to be retiring too. That would probably be the best. They in order in, to, for them to waive the three. Kind of wave, year. and they've been the two of them are the face of the NHL for so many years. Mm-hmm. What's why not do it? Just wave the three year thing. What's the harm in it? Everyone's good. What is someone going to put up a fight and say, Oh, I don't know. They weren't well, married. There's, there's They're always unbelievable talents fight for that. What? Yeah. There's always some jackass who will try and be different and go, no, I'm not voting that. I'm not doing. Yeah. Give me a break. But I don't it's even... excitement. It builds up the excitement. It's just like your special players go in. My guess would be it's, it would, they were, their concern of the hall here. I, and I want to, I want to defend the hall here because I love the hall. <laughs> I, I think their concern would be, is it disrespectful to other great players that were not granted that? So in other words, 
I don't believe Mark Messier had it waived. Messier yeah. was a pretty good player. Yeah, hell of a player. You know, Nick Lidstrom, Chris Pronger, like, I don't think Fair Marty enough. Brodeur. It's a good argument. I don't think Patrick Waugh. You know, like, we're talking Dominic Hasek, like, the yeah. greatest of all time in their respective positions. They had to wait three years. Yeah. So, no, I think it's more yeah, about that. It's like, well, what do we say to these other great guys? Well, there's some people that think that Sid's a top five player all time. I think like, he is. That he it? is for that, me. That should warrant Okay, it. then I put think. him in. Ovi, like, he's got... He's yeah. going to break Gretzky's record. Put well, him in. Who Like, if he's going to get into the Mount Rushmore, the question is who's going to come out? Like, it's Gretzky or Lemieux, how? Who would you take out of those four if it's going to be – if it, and if it's not Sid, like, the other guy in Edmonton could be coming in 10 years. Like, Oh, yeah. he is coming. There's no question. So, to knock one of those four out, he's got to do a lot of winning you, before we have that But do you have to have That's four on the Mount decide. Rushmore? Hmm? You have to be four. Like, yeah, well, that is Mount Rushmore. I There's know, four guys up there. Like, you can't, you I'm can't, saying, Jesus. like, make it add a fifth head. That's Old what I'm saying. Comment. Yeah, you no, can't expand I, on Mount Rushmore, I can you? I understand. What I'm saying is you could just do a top five. That's just what I'm saying. Just chisel some guy chisel on the side. a different head on the side. Chiseling <laughs> out a head. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying he I'm has to be to on there. He has to be on there. Like, Sid, you think, has to be? I, I, I mean... I don't know who you take out. What you do is you make it a top five argument. This, these are the top five. Okay. Of but all Rushmore, I know. Rushmore's got more there. kind I've of I've been to Mount Rushmore. Yes, you have with an RV, right? If well, like, it is weird. you not driving. The heads are so small. It's, is that right? From a distance. I figured weird. it massive. No, it's weird. Looking. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever get there. Yeah. Not a high priority for me. Yeah. All right, hour two coming up. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app.